1984, now that was a year of mixed emotions. It was certainly a great year with regards to the rise of home computers and consoles. Some great childhood games came out that year. It was definitely a golden year for video gaming. 1984 was also the year of Band-Aid, where the music industry made a significant contribution to the famine relief in Ethiopia through the Band-Aid charity single, Do They Know It's Christmas? This event certainly marked a high point in popular culture and charity crossover. Princess Diana, she gave birth to her second child, Henry Charles Albert David. It turned out to be a bit of a brat, to be honest with you. Torval and Dean entered the record books by getting a perfect score across the board, winning a gold medal for ice skating. I certainly remember that. However, it is fair to say that 1984 was also a year of political unrest in the UK. One of the most notable events in 1984 in the UK was that miners' strike. This industrial action led by the National Union of Mine Workers against the National Coal Board was a major confrontation between that of Thatcher's government and the trade unions. Then there was the Chesterfield by-election. That was a critical political event reflecting the political climate at the time. Tony Benn, a prominent figure in the Labour Party, won the seat signalling a shift in the party's direction. Yep, I certainly remember as a young kid watching all of this and all of these politicians on TV and I thought to myself, I reckon I could do better myself. Well, 1984, the game from Incentive Software challenges you to do just that. A game of government management is a financial management game which gives you the chance to be the Chancellor of the Exchequer for the United Kingdom in the 1980s, 1984 to be exact. Could I ride out three terms of office and survive into the 21st century? Could I weather two general elections? Will our Britain conquer unemployment and inflation simultaneously? By God, I can't do any worse than the current situation. Get me in that seat. Or perhaps a more likely scenario, I would be forced to resign, just like any other Prime Minister in the country, really. Okay, on to the game. The game was written by Rob M. H. Carter and it was published by Incentive Software, which I've already mentioned, in 1983. The game was both released on the ZX Spectrum and the BBC Micro. We'll start with the ZX Spectrum version here and then we'll look at the BBC Micro version later. Starting in 1984 with the real economy figures from 1982 and 83, for the British economy, you take the hot seat and the responsibility of guiding the national affairs. You must try to survive in office for as long as possible, trying to keep the books balanced and making more money for the country without upsetting too many people. You will be asked to bring your judgement to bear on the complex interrelated network of factors that govern the performance of the national economy. How exciting this, isn't it? After the opening titles, you will come to your first screen, which shows you the government balance sheet, itemising the money flowing into and out of government coffers. As Prime Minister, you will need to know how your money is spent and what sources of revenue you are tapping. These figures are balanced and over the next year, you will attempt to keep it balanced. Each time you play 1984, you will always inherit these figures. Okay, now we're on the major indicators screen. There are eight major indicators which allow you to chart your progress through your terms of office. You are able to call up the history of any time of these indicators during your administration to see how you are progressing. As a general guide, you've got to keep inflation and unemployment down, you've got to keep the gross domestic product and the gold reserves and the industrial output, you've got to make all that grow. Trade balance, you've got to make positive, average wage, you've got to keep that down, and the exchange rate, you've got to try to keep that stable. There you go, see, I told you, I would make a great Prime Minister. Okay, now this is the minimum lending rate, or MLR for short. So each year you must choose the MLR. This is a figure that sets the interest rates the banks charge. Now this 1984 figure that appears is uh, basically a guide. It is different each time you play it, and you should not be afraid to choose your MLR freely. 
the program will keep you in check, so feel free to experiment. Right, this is the economic histogram. The economic function of government, which we control, is to regulate and direct the flows between five major blocks. Now, if you allow any instability to arise, you must take steps to correct it, or else it will progressively grow larger and larger and force you to resign. So let's not do that, eh? The way you handle these dangerous instabilities is by using your government funds to direct money into blocks that are losing out due to your policies and to siphon off money from blocks that are growing under your administration. For example, if you find industry flagging, you might choose to increase the grant to industry. Or suppose you found the banks choose to alter the bank rate in the hope that it may alter the deficit. Or you could take direct action and make a cash transfusion directly to the banks by seizing your opportunity immediately after the wages round. Oh, I hope you're keeping up. These uh, cabinet meetings are called from time to time to allow you to deal with an issue that has arisen. Often you will be asked for a decision and you must enter yes or no. Annually, you must negotiate three wage settlements with the three main sectors of the economy. The civil servants, these are people employed directly by the government. The public sector, these are people employed by nationalised industries. And the private sector, people employed by the private industry. You must outwit a complex function that evaluates each sector's ability to claim and presents that claim. If you want to succeed at 1984, you must keep wage rises down and since the unions will try to secure a settlement greater than the rate of inflation to maintain the members' living standards, you should offer a sum less than their claim. From our government's point of view, the smaller the settlement, the better. But if you offer less than a certain figure, your negotiations will fail and their claim will ultimately be forced through. Each pay bargaining session, you must remember that the outcome is either their claim or your offer, and the smaller your offer, the less chance it has of succeeding. Naturally, if you offer a sum equal to their claim, you will find that that figure is accepted every time, but eventually inflation will take off and you will never make it to 1999. Okay, government investments. This is an opportunity to bail out the banks if they begin to lose money heavily. If you find the bank's fortune suffering, you can prop them up with a government investment. But take care. Indiscriminate shoveling of money into the financial institutions will upset the delicate mechanisms of the economy and can lead you to the political gallows. So you need to be careful here, act only when necessary and as sparingly as possible. Okay, department funding. Now, it is clearly the responsibility of our government to ensure its own departments are adequately financed. So consider this, the money that is annually appointed to your apartments must broadly speaking do two jobs. Firstly, it must pay the wage of the people it employs. Health must pay nurses and doctors and the people who cook hospital meals and wash bed linen. Law and order must pay the wages of the police and so on and so forth. I'm sure you get the drift here. Secondly, there must be money available for capital expenditure. Now, I mean, the army would be useless without new tanks every so often or no petrol to put in them. The Department of Education would be stuck if schools and universities could not be built or at least kept up. So each year you can opt to set the department budget higher to keep up with the civil servant wages and the increasing cost of capital expenditure. The figure you are shown in the above table and the one you are asked to specify in the program is the sum of wages and capital expenditure. If you go mad and give any department an outlandish ride, you will find yourself doing a Liz Truss and moving out of number 10 Downing Street quite quickly. So my advice is not to persistently ignore these pleas and warnings from the department accountants. 
It is a good idea to try to keep the departments funded adequately on a yearly basis as each time there is a warning issued, it reveals your ineptitude and brings closer the day of your downfall experience. This will help you to judge this accurately. At least there's a safety net which exists that after you receive your warnings, you're asked if you wish to relocate your budgets. Oh my goodness, for that. a complicated game this, isn't it? Hard to believe that this game is over 40 years old. Wow. Right, on to the budget. Each year, we have the opportunity to fix tax rates and benefits, pensions and allowances. These are important because the tax rates determine how much is available for the government to spend. Also, the cash circulating in the welfare state is only useful if it keeps pace with inflation or more precisely the average wage. And if it doesn't, then you'll probably find a two nation syndrome beginning to develop where there are the rich employed and the poor non-employed. So to prevent this state of affairs arising, you must keep your weekly rates of old age pension, unemployment benefit and children's allowance topped up. The only actual restrictions on your decisions here are that you must not try to put up the rate of tax by more than 10% of that rate in any one attempt. And if you do, you'll see that it has not stuck. For example, increased corporation tax from 40 to 44% is okay, but to 45% is not. At the end of each round, when you have set the budget requirements to your satisfaction, you get a warning if you have upset the balance by not increasing welfare benefits enough. You will get three of these warnings in each term of office, and if you ignore the third, you will rue it. Now, with foreign aid, you're obliged to allocate some money annually to help less developed countries and will receive due credit for it. But beware, these countries can become dependent upon your aid and in some circumstances it cannot be reduced. Equally, the government gives societies to industry and agriculture each year and again, it is easier to increase than reduce them. Use the grant to trim the expansion of industry or bolster a sagging economy. At the end of each year, you'll be given a congratulatory message on your surviving. Well, that's what we hope. Or you'll be given the reason for your demise. And a last look at your economic indicators. And supposing you have survived, you will get a cumulative annual performance rating. And this is important because if it is not good enough, you will fail to be re-elected in 1988 and also 1993. And that takes you into the next year of government. Now, you can experiment with a game, but please bear in mind that a small oversight can destroy a large part of the economy when multiplied by time and knock-on effects. Above all, like reality, try to steer the economy along the twisting road of change and don't get too ideological. Your theory might not work well in this model. Okay, so let's have a look at the BBC Micro version of the game. So there you go. Graphically and sound wise, the BBC Micro 1984 is a better version compared to the ZX Spectrum, but the overall mechanics and playability of the game is exactly the same. Regardless which version you play, overall this is a clear, concise, well presented game. Performance graphics and good prompts on all the screens make it an extremely easy game to get into, particularly if you're new to this kind of stuff. 
This is definitely one of the more interesting ZX Spectrum games I've played. The idea behind this game is both topical and interesting. It's ideal for economists and anyone else who would like to have a go. And personally, I have to say, I actually found playing 1984 an educational experience and you get a basic insight into how the country's finances work. Even by today's standards, this game is still a playable experience. What I also found quite helpful is that also included with the game is a little booklet entitled A Pocket Guide to Run in Britain. It certainly helped me to understand the game. I also sent a copy to 10 down the street. I think they might find this useful. So anyway folks, that was my video experience of 1984, a game of government management. It's a different kind of video that I would normally talk about and I'm guessing many of you have not heard or played this game. But I wanted to show that our Specky does have other games to its library other than just the platform or shooting games. This is a thinking man game, a strategy game on the ZX Spectrum. And it's this kind of game that would perhaps go on and inspire future games such as Theme Park. Then that's another good game. So I hope you liked my video and if you did then please press that like button or leave a comment. I will certainly try and get back to you. But of course it would be great if you considered subscribing to my channel. That would be just great. Until my next video, take care and I'll see you all very soon. Bye bye.